vamos a trabajar, invitar a otras personas a transmitir contigo. No, 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 no. ¿Qué es esto? Ok. Bueno. Bueno, entonces vamos a trabajar hoy. Eh, vamos, eh, we're gonna talk, today we're going to talk about the, uh, the subject about breast implant removal. I'm trying to get my... Instagram to function, but I'm not making it happen. So let's see what else can I do. Okay, it's not happening right now. It's not happening. Okay, so let me give me one second, see if I can make it happen because it's not happening right now. It's not happening. So now, I think I solved it. It's trying to connect again in the Instagram. Right now we are um, with Facebook. Thank you guys for being there and girls. Thank you for the YouTube ones. And I'm trying to connect with the, um, with the Instagram. But I don't know what's happening. It's not working. I have a new phone and it's just not working here. Wonderful. Let's see what I can do. It's just not going on. It's just not happening right now. Oh my God. Give me one more second and see if it, it helps. If it works or if it doesn't. Uh -uh. This says video in pause video. And I'm not uh, uh, finalizar. Asegura que finalizar el envío. Okay, let's finalize it. And let's see. Uh, Okay, let's see if I can do it again. Sorry for you guys, but I'm trying to do it. I've not been able to do it. Okay, let's see if now we can. Okay, so again, today's subject will be breast implant removal. We're gonna do it in English today. So uh, for those uh, that uh, only speak Spanish, I apologize, but uh, we were doing these lives in English because many patients are asking about it. Oh, I had a lot of problems today, so please excuse me for being so late with you guys, but I'm here. So, the first thing we need to know when we're talking about breast implant removal uh, is uh, why. The reason why. Why do I want to take the breast implants out? So, usually there are two patients, right? One patient that is that patient that says, you know what? I've already had enough with them. I enjoyed them. I put them when I was younger or several years ago, but right now it's not my priority. I don't want any more of those breasts. I just want, uh, and I don't want to think that I, I change it now, I have to keep on changing them. I'm just, I just don't want that anymore. If that's, that's you, okay, we can go ahead and take them out. Um, usually uh, when I started my plastic surgery career, there were a lot of those patients that came to me and told me that you know, doctor, what if uh, I take my breast implants out and I don't put them anymore back? That was always a possibility. Uh, and many times they went to other plastic surgeons and what the plastic surgeon would say, say, no, 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 don't take them out. They will not just not, not look good. Go ahead and change them, put smaller ones. And that's what usually was done. But back then, 20 years ago, because time flies, <laughs> And when I was graduate, when I was starting my plastic surgery career, I always tell my patients, you know what? If you really don't want them, we'll go ahead and take them out. That was back then when usually people didn't do that. All the plastic surgeons didn't do that. They usually would ask the patient to try and put the smaller ones, but don't take them out definitely. But I did. I came from a plastic surgery uh, residency when we did a lot of reconstructive procedures. And I just thought, okay, if that woman doesn't want them anymore, why don't take them out? And that's, and of course, here came all the reconstructive knowledge uh, that we achieved during the plastic surgery residency to make sure and reconstruct that uh, breast once the breast implant is taken out. That's one, kind, one type of patients. The second type of patient will be those patients that, that simply don't feel good because about that implants, but not because they don't feel good like how they look, but because they don't feel good regarding 
and other symptoms. Right now, the FDA have not declared that there are like uh, uh, enough scientific uh, investigations to say that the breast implants will produce a, a disease in a patient. But there's a lot of uh, information out there that shows that many patients just don't feel good with the implants. For example, they can feel symptoms, uh, bizarre symptoms such as uh, headaches or insomnia or depression or hair loss or a lot of allergies that they didn't have before, skin allergies or other kind of allergies or pain or swelling, a lot of strange things that again, FDA says that they don't have enough uh, uh, proof, scientific proof today, but that patients like, feel those symptoms, right? And other patients that say that they, they have gotten, uh, for example, diseases like uh, lupus, uh, like uh, arthritis, uh, or any a, a disease that produces in chronic inflammation that can be due, uh, can be uh, because of secondary to the breast implants. And those patients in Spanish, we call them Femenal Asia. In English, we call it BII, BII, breast implant illness. And there's a lot of stuff out there in the media, and especially in the social media, where they say that uh, uh, there's a lot of patients that suffer from that. And that 80% of the patients, once they take the breast implants out, they, the symptoms disappear. Although bizarre symptoms. Of course, if they have a lupus or arthritis, it will not go away because we take out the implants. But uh, all of the other symptoms, 80% of the patients say they do not suffer from them after taking their breast implants out. So those are mainly the two type of patients, ones that, that feel ill because of the implants and the other ones because they just don't want them anymore. They just enjoy them uh, and they just don't want to keep on changing them uh, repeatedly years after years. Remember that also according to the FDA, breast implants are not for life. We should think once we put the implant in, that we will keep on changing the implant throughout our lives, more or less every 10 to 15 years. Why? Because after several years, more or less 10 or 15, uh, the um, uh, risk of uh, implant rupture increases, and that's why uh, it's preferably, uh, preferable to take the implants out before they uh, increase the risk of rupturing. So, if a patient right now, today, is thinking of taking their breast implants out, just go ahead and do it, right? Um, I know that can be a little bit of, of produce anxiety, give me a little bit of, um, like I'm, I'm a little bit frightened when if I'm thinking of the possibility of taking it out because I don't know how I'm gonna look. Usually, why in the first place a patient puts the breast implants in? Because we want a better cleavage, right, usually. That's, that's the reason. We want a little bit more of breasts or we want, or, or we want a, breast, a better uh, breast cleavage. They usually uh, with time uh, or with pregnancies or just because we live in planet Earth and planet Earth uh, has uh, the, air for, the gravity force that pulls everything down, makes that the, the, the breasts just, just, just are a little bit floppy and lose that cleavage that we like. So that's why we ask uh, or we think on the possibility, we consider the possibility of having a breast implant in our body. Because usually it will be, for now, uh, one of the quickest and easiest, let's say easiest, way of returning back or giving back that cleavage that we lost with time or with pregnancies. Or there are other couple of patients that simply don't have nothing and they just want to use uh, to have the cleavage and that's why a breast implant is introduced. So. If you did had the procedure, there's no time to say, oh, why did I do it? No, 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 no. We always have a reason why we do stuff. And if that was done, well, that's what was done. Uh, because in that particular situation, in that moment, that's what you wanted as a patient. So there's no time now to just say, oh, why I did it? No, no, no. Now we're gonna think or take action on how I feel today and what I want to feel in the future or how I project myself in the future without that breast implant. So again, once we take the breast implant out, we could do it only as an incision, small incision in the areola, in the areola or on the incision that was done to do the breast augmentation, for example, in the inframammary fold, and just open it and take it out. And that's it. 
but I do not recommend that. Why? Because when we take that implant out, what happens? Well, the breast just, just feels more floppy if we take the implant out. It's like, for example, if for example, you, you blow up a balloon and suddenly you take all the air out, how does that balloon will look? When you put the air, the, the air in, it looks nice, right? Roundy and shapey. And when you take the air out, how does it look? It doesn't look nice, right? It looks like floppy and without volume and, and just all of the magic of the cleavage is lost. So if we want to prevent that, we should think that if we're gonna take our implants out, we need to do a reconstruction because otherwise it just will not look nice. It will look just like an empty balloon, you know? So if that's not how I wanna look, then we have to think on a reconstruction. Usually we could, depending on the breast and depending on the patient age and how the breast tissue, how much breast tissue there is, and also um, what is the quality of the skin of that patient, we could consider the possibility of taking the breast, uh, the implant out and just doing a scar around the areola. That's called a periareola a peri incision. But that uh, usually that's not like the, the, the common. Uh, because usually when we're talking about uh, taking the uh, breast out, the breast implant out, <clears throat> there will be a lot of space there in that breast. And usually by doing just, just taking out the skin around the areola will not be enough to reshape that, that breast. Usually uh, if we just take the breast out, the breast implant out, and we don't do anything else, but just cut around the areola, all that we're gonna do is just take a little bit of skin around that, that uh, nipple areola complex, but it will st still be like floppy down here, the breast. So it will not be like shaped like a real breast. So it doesn't look that nice. I've done it a couple of times, of course, in some patients, usually patients that are young and that have some, um, some breast tissue and that don't have any tosses or, or any uh, droopy uh, breasts and that have like a nice skin, a thick skin. Those will be the best patients to do just the incision around the areola. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna take out the breast implant and we're gonna try and do like a Prusu suture inside, okay? So that we just bring that floppy, just a little bit, just more cozy inside and have a better shape and take skin only around the areola. Again, usually those are a few fewer patients that are good candidates for that kind of reconstruction. Usually if we take the breast implants out and there is not much uh, breast tissue or there is a lot uh, of droopiness or the, the breast has fallen or there's not a nice, uh, a good quality of skin, those patients would require a reconstruction, meaning that we will have to do more, uh, a bigger incision or more scars. That usually we don't like scars. What will be the scars? We will have to do scars around the areola, uh, vertical T and horizontal uh, on the inframary succulus, like an inverted T incision. With that incision, we are able to reshape better the, 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 um, the breast, because usually the breast, uh, it's not, um, it's, it's, it has like, a, let's say like a, like a triangle kind of, a shape, right? It's not roundy, roundy. No, it's more like triangle, a little bit of triangle. And that, uh, and the recreation of that natural triangular shape uh, is much easier to, to do when you have scar, the scar, the inverted T scar, okay? And of course, uh, we have to take a lot of skin out, a lot of that droopy breast skin out. And that's why we will take like, I always say we will do like the peri areola incision that we take just the skin out and in the droopy part down we will do we will take like a like a kind of slice of a cake like boom of that inferior pole right we cut it but we don't take it out we just cut it and leave it connected on the upper part of that of that triangle you know and that skin we take it out just the skin but the tissue, like the muscle and the fatty tissue and the breast tissue that is there, we just kind of 
uh, do like a little, let's say a little ball or whatever we can call it, like a little shape, and we put it inside the breast on the area uh, of the cleavage that would usually, eat, where it usually is, it's in the upper medial pole so that the breast uh, ends up with a better shape with a little bit of cleavage, right? And, and, and also in a triangular manner so that you look more natural. Of course, there will not be a lot of tissue, uh, uh, a lot of breast tissue or a lot of, of, of cleavage if we don't have a lot of breast tissue. Some patients, we need to use what we call flaps, for example, flaps of the muscle nearby. Sometimes uh, there's not a lot of uh, pectoral muscle because when we put an implant in, the pectoral muscle starts to, to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Uh, so we will not have a lot of muscle there, pectoral muscle. So sometimes we have to take other muscles that are uh, nearby, like for example, the serratus, and we have to bring it up as, 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 as high as we can so that we can shape a little bit that breast. So that's why we're talking about a, a breast reconstruction, not just a breast augmentation or aesthetic procedure, but more a reconstructive procedure. But that's what we need to do so that we have a better shape. Many doctors will offer also another option that will be just taking the breast implants out and in the same procedure, just putting fat of the same patients. That seems like a, a nice option, right? Because no scars are needed. But usually in the breast, the fat reabsorbs and reabsorbs quite a bit more. I always say like half of what we put. Plus, if there's a lot of space and we pretend uh, to just fill it with fat, a lot of space filled with fat. It just, just, just doesn't work well. Why? Because fat, so that the fat can, can live, if you take it from one side, you put it in the other one, it needs certain conditions so that it can live. And one of the conditions is that it has a nice area that has a lot of blood around, like a lot of, of let's say, a, a lot of, of irrigation around. And if there's a big space inside, guess what? There's not a lot of irrigation there. So it's like if you take a, a little plant out of, 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 how do you say, of, of where it's planted and put it back in another place with no soil. No soil. So that plant will usually don't live very well, right? Or even die. That's what can happen when you take fat from one part of the other one, a lot of fat, and you put it in a big space that is not really connected with enough soil, let's say, or blood so that it can live. So that's why if we pretend to taint, just take the implant out and fill it with a bunch of fat, it just doesn't work. It can help, of course, if we put a little bit of fat, it can help, but it will not be the solution just to pretend to take as much uh, implant and the same volume of implant, just fill it with fat. It just doesn't work that easy. What, it would be perfect, but it just doesn't, doesn't work. Myself, itself, I don't like it to do a lot of reconstruction of the breast, uh, saying cutting the breast tissue, cutting, moving the muscles, and go ahead and arranging again uh, a shape, a breast-like shape, right, with all of the tissues that we take and the muscle, and in, in to, on top of that, put more fat. I don't believe it's a good idea. Uh, but again, every patient is different, so we have to evaluate every patient individually to decide what will be the best option for that patient to reconstruct that breast. But uh, as a summary, if you're thinking I'm taking your breast implant out because you just feel that it's not the time to have them anymore and because you just don't, don't, don't feel well about them, there is an option. We can take them out under a breast implant removal or explantation plus the breast lift with a reconstruction. Remember, it's a reconstruction. We will have an inverted T scar and we will work towards giving volume to that cleavage. That is the upper medial pole, okay? So that is not totally flat. And by doing that, we will do the procedure. After that, it's important that the patient understands that usually we will have a good appearance but remember, it's a reconstruction, and we can never promise, oh, don't worry, we'll look beautiful of the procedure, after the procedure of resting vulnerable. We cannot promise that, but we will work towards giving the best result to my patient. And usually, they are happy. 
important things so that you know after the procedure you need to, usually uh, there can be a lot of drainage or a lot of liquid production that is called seroma and uh, we can prevent that seroma by using a drain uh, uh, at the beginning I used less and less drains uh, but now uh, many of the patients uh, since they have a higher risk of a seroma I will leave a drain of course I need to balance between leaving the drain of course and don't uh, and, and pre to, to prevent a seroma and a future uh, infection versus putting the drain remember the drain gives negative pressure like push tissue against uh, like backwards okay against the the, the, the breast chest and that uh, can uh, promote let's say uh, that loss of volume of the implant that uh, so that the tissue can end up uh, less projected and more a little bit more flat or with a little bit of an indentation that is not that nice but usually we have to balance as surgeons to put the drain versus not put the drain and in many of the patients we end up now putting a drain um, I always recommend uh, that the drain will take will be taken out a maximum eight days no more than that usually is less and it will depend on how much liquid your 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 own body produces many in some patients we will use just a bra uh, with the drain or in some patients we will use a bandage uh, to prevent uh, liquid accumulation it depends on how the how your body uh, uh, evolved during the procedure some patients just kind to just kind of bleed more uh, and some patients just have a bigger area empty area once the implant is taking out uh, no I recommend uh, no heavy lifting or exercising for two months after the procedure and I do like to put stitches that are taken out not the ones that are reabsorbed I know many patients like the sutures that are reabsorbed but I don't use those because many times those sutures that are reabsorbed can end up producing a skin reaction or an allergy and it's not nice so I prefer to put sutures that are taken out so for those patients that are flying um, out of the country to have the procedure done here in Colombia I advise that you stay with it ideally three weeks or if not at least 15 days but better three weeks after the procedure that would be the best three weeks um, what else remember uh, since we're having scars the scars at the beginning don't look great uh, because they are red or pinkish and so they are no more noticeable but with time the color the color starts to fade towards the same skin color skin of the patient turns a little bit whiter and then it camouflages very well I never say that the patient scar disappears because that's not true but usually it camouflages very well with time uh, more or less in average how much time does a scar uh, 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 ends up being red or turns or how much time it takes for a scar to turn from red to white meaning meaning, meaning to be immature red to mature white it takes approximately more or less six months four to six months but some patients can take even two years for the scar it's for the scar to mature so the scar to turn from red to white during that time in ideally you should use pressure on the scar the more pressure you're on the scar, the, the more pressure you use on the scar the quicker it turns uh, white or the quicker it matures and of course if it's getting a little bit bumpy or or a little bit uh, thick the massage also helps a lot to prevent uh, that it ends up being a thick string so uh, if you are interested in taking your breast implants out you can go ahead and ask for a, a virtual appointment so that we can talk a little bit more about your particular case I, oh, I also like to look at your pictures listen to what bothers you and together we will make the correct surgical plan for you in this particular moment during your appointment I always say that every person is different of course every individual is, is different 
every body is different. That's why some patients have allergies, some others not. Some patients uh, have situations with the implants, some others not. And of course, it's also important, every moment of our life is different. So again, for those that had uh, the breast implants and are regretting them, that's the regretting having the surgery, just don't regret yourself. I always say, everything happens for a reason. If you chose to have those breast implants many times, uh, many years ago, it was because it was uh, uh, the right uh, choice for you in that moment. You wanted to have a bigger breast, you wanted to improve your cleavage. Uh, now, if you don't want them anymore, you can take them out. The important thing, and now with the evolution of uh, the aesthetic plastic surgery procedures, is for us doctors to inform our patients about uh, what can happen and what happens after a breast augmentation so that they understand uh, those patients that have a breast uh, implant today, that they will have more than one surgery, and that there are other things such as uh, breast, uh, the BBI, breast implant illness patients, uh, uh, out there uh, with symptoms due to the breast implant that 80% say that the symptoms disappear once they are extracted and other illnesses, for example, like the ALCL or anaplastic uh, large cell lymphoma. And that is another pathology uh, that uh, uh, many patients uh, today uh, seems um, uh, the appearance, uh, the, no, since the registration of that illness, uh, are, were afraid that they could have the, the, the disease because of the breast implants. I know it's not today uh, live, but just, just to say a little bit, sh very short, so that I don't get it too long, but the ALCL is a condition that has been associated with certain type of implants, with, especially with the surface of the implant that is texturized uh, but again it doesn't mean that all patients will, will get it it's a percentage of those patients that then get it that can get it and that's very important for the doctor to inform the patient so that you patients have uh, uh, can choose under the correct um, uh, let's say information uh, so that you can enjoy or not your breast implants. And another important thing is that uh, once you decide to have a breast implant, uh, it's important for you to have all this information so that you don't end up uh, after the breast implant uh, surgery uh, having the symptoms and unfortunately taking the breast out, the breast implant out without knowing that that was a possibility before the procedure. So again, what do I encourage patients? If you are right now, uh, don't uh, feel good with your breast implants, the breast implant removal with a breast lift and reconstruction or breast explantation is a possibility for you today. Remember, it's a reconstruction. There will be a scar are things that we need to tell the patient. We need to inform the patient all the possibilities, but it's a procedure that can be achieved uh, under a nice breast cleavage and uh, uh, with a considerably uh, acceptable appearance and even a nice appearance when we have a nice or oh, enough breast tissue to do a nice reconstruction. Remember, something that I forgot to say, that when we take the breast, and the breast implants out, we would usually take that capsule, that is the scar that surrounds the implant, we will take that scar out, and many patients would like to do biopsies on them. If you want to, eh, of course, we can do the biopsy of that eh, capsule to make sure that it's okay and there's nothing wrong with it. Eh, and that way the patient will feel, eh, let's say, uh, less anxious about uh, um, what can happen to her even though that uh, breast implant is not in her anymore. So again, it's important to do the surgical plan together with your surgeon. That's why the appointment is so important. Uh, listening to the patient is key for me. Looking at the pictures, of course, and doing together that um, 
surgical plan, including what scar are we going to do, if we're going to take the, the breast um, capsule out, uh, and what type of reconstruction will be done, what type of scar, and of course, all the post-operatively um, uh, care that you as patient, that you, that you as patients need to know before the procedure. So I'm gonna uh, uh, just pause right now about uh, the breast explantation procedure, breast implant presentation procedure right now. I'm gonna just have a look if there's a question before we end up uh, with today's live. So let's have a look if we have any questions. Sometimes you're pretty shy, let's see. Uh, it's possible, there's one question. It's possible that when you do the breast implant uh, extraction, you can also do a, lipos a liposuction? Of course, that can be done. Of course, we can do a, with a breast implant removal or explantation, our liposuction, of course. And also can, we can do other procedures, not only liposuction, but we could do also, for example, f a, 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 a blepharoplasty or a rhinoplasty or a bichectomy or a autoplasty or many other procedures that can be done together, uh, uh, labioplasty, for example. All of those procedures can be done with a breast explantation procedure. Yes, we could do another procedure. What else? What is, uh, what, uh, in your opinion about, uh, what's it, injecting a little fat after reconstruction? Oh, month later. Yeah, of course. We could do it month later, no problem at all. I always tell my patients, uh, if you, for example, after the reconstruction, how do you feel with it? What is the volume? If Are you uh, okay with the volume? Or if you want more, we could go ahead and put a little bit of fat afterwards. No problem at all. That's a possibility too. No problem. Let's see what, what is another question. A cirujana que estoy, the surgeon that I'm consulting says that she would, what says here, that she uh, hará una bolsa y la llenará de grasa y la pondrá en mi seno. That the surgeon that she's consulting says that she will do like a little bag and in that bag she will put all, uh, the fat and that will be the reconstruction. As I advised in during this video, I do not agree to put a lot of fat inside an empty sack because that will give me a higher risk of the fat not being reabsorbed. And that means that uh, the fat can, uh, it, it can reabsorb, plus uh, the higher, a higher risk of fat necrosis or an infection, because the fat will not be able to integrate, will not live in that empty space. So we can put a little bit of fat, but do I do not believe it's a good idea to just think that we're going to take the implant out or we're going to fill the space with just fat and that's it. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Okay, there's another question that even though if, she, if we don't have any problems with our breast implants, should we change them? So that's a very good question. I will answer what the FDA says, and the FDA says that because with time, uh, there's a higher risk of the breast implant of rupturing, that's why we should think that we, will be, that we will change them with time, every 10 to 15 years. It's not like an obligation, it's not mandatory. Many patients just don't change their breast implants and they just never rupture. But as a health professional, what the FDA advises is we tell our patients that they should change the implants because there is a higher risk of rupturing uh, the more time they are uh, that those breast implants are in the patient's body. Okay, let's see what other questions. Let's see if we have a question through here, guys. Did you make a surgery in USA? No, I don't do surgeries in the USA. If you want to have a procedure done with me, Lina Triana, you have to fly to Cali, Colombia, and I will be very uh, happy to do the procedure, but here in Cali, Colombia. What else do we have here? What else? Well, okay, what are the questions? Girls, did you make a surgery? Okay, yeah, that was the same. Let me see what else we have. Hi, Dr. Triana. Thank you so much for all the information. Can a breast reconstruction be done with my own fat? 
it is safe. I would rather do that than getting implants, but I've heard it's not safe. Okay, so if you're thinking on having, on, on augmenting your breast tissue, on having, uh, on enhancing your breast, it can be done with fat, it's true. Uh, but again, the fat can be reabsorbed and uh, usually putting a very, a, a huge amount of fat is not a good idea because of what I just explained with the reconstruction, the same can happen with the breast augmentation with only fat. If we put too much fat, there will not be enough soil or conditions so that that fat lives. And so there's a higher risk of having a, a fat necrosis that can bring an infection and it's not a nice thing to happen. Also, it's important for all of you to know that when we put fat in a breast, there's always a possibility of having, of having a fast cyst as a complication. Usually fast cysts are not big deal if they are small, but sometimes they can grow and they can, are, and they can be seen like, like little like irregularities in the breast and it's not nice. And also the fast cyst can end up with a calcification and that calcification can be, um, let's say, confused with a breast cancer. It will not give breast cancer. Nothing to do fat with breast cancer. That's not true. But when we do a mammogram, if there's a calcification and that calcification looks like a star, that's like, oh, oh, lights up, it can be a cancer. But usually, of course, with their, with their radiologists have the history of the patients having had a procedure of breast augmentation with fat, it gives, ring some bells that it can be just a scar, but still there will be a doubt, and it's not nice to have that kind of doubt. So if we do a uh, ornamentation of the breast with a fat, an important thing to have would be to have a mammogram before the procedure, a mammogram uh, six months after the procedure, a mammogram one year after the procedure, and keep those three mammograms as a treasure. Why? Because every time you have a, a mammogram afterwards, for example, after you're 45 years old, it just brings those three uh, mammograms so that the radiologist can have a look at them and have a good idea how was the breast before the procedure and how are the breast after the procedure with the scarring so that he can, uh, so that that will help him or her, the radiologist, get less confusion regarding if it's, uh, if it is, um, um, a cancer or not, when a calcification that has a star-like shape appears in a mammogram, okay? Let me see what else do we have here. It's just time flies and this lives, really flies. Okay, hi doctor, my own fat, okay, this one I answered. Let me see what else do we have. Do you make a no? That one I answered. One more. Let's see before we go. Let's see what else. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. What else? What else do we have here? Okay. And doctor, uh, even they're asking, even if I don't have any problems, should I change them? I think I already answered that. Uh, you don't need to change them if you don't want them. If you don't want to, it's not mandatory to change the breast implants, but remember, eh, it, they will have a high risk of rupturing. Una cirujana me dijo que lo que rellenaba con grasa me Okay, okay, what is that? Uh, let me see what else. What's, what's in your opinion? What's, what is your opinion about injecting a little fat after? Okay, I think I answered that one already. And let me see. It is possible when you do a breast uh, implant removal to do other procedures? Yes, it is possible, as I already told them, as I already told you guys. Uh, the breast implant should be taken out every 10 to 15 years. That's the uh, usually what we uh, recommend. That what I recommend is what the FDA says. So again, if you have any other questions regarding breast implant removal, please go ahead and ask me through the social media, or uh, if you want more information and you're really interested in having the procedure done, just go ahead and ask for a virtual appointment uh, and we will be happy to give you uh, the advice and listen to you and see what is the best option for your breast implant removal or explantation. 
Thank you very much for being with us today. And I hope to see you soon in another uh, live. Make sure and write on our social media, what do you want me to talk in a future live in English? And of course in Spanish too, uh, but be specific in English so that I can go ahead and uh, give a live about that and answer hopefully all your doubts regarding the procedure you want me to ask, uh, you, want, you want me to, uh, to talk. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye. Let's see here. And let's see here.